Hello and welcome back to Cut Cutting with Galen. We're Is cutting. What calling it? I don't know. I don't know. What do you want to call it? Cut it out. No, that's not it. Uh, how about, I I like the name that me and Shen came up with, which was uh, Cud Buds. Oh, a couple of Cud Buds. Just uh, chewing the cut. Huh. Oh, wah, wah. I think that's actually someone else's podcast name. So I Cave sh Boys. <laughs> All right. So uh, last time we covered moving around um, Jopa and talking to people and taking some quests and um, some very minor mechanical things like looking at things, which is actually pretty important. Looking at things is a very important thing. Yes, and I definitely remembered everything you said. It's that, all locked away. I'm, in I'm my glad. Brain. There, there, there's going to be a test in the form of you not dying repeatedly. Uh, okay. All right. So um, this is like a very minor uh, kind of beneficial thing, but we're going to do it anyway just to check all the boxes. Can you? Uh, you can use your mouse. It's probably easier to navigate there. Click on the, the top of the the our, our screen right here. The top, so, just anywhere? No, just like on, on a terrain tile near the top of the oh. screen. Yeah, perfect. That oh. way our, our dude will move. You actually clicked I found on a the sign. Screen. You did. That is a uh, that tells your your uh, your dude to like look at it or interact with it. It's a good sign okay. to click on, actually. It reads, to Graveyard and Shrine, and we actually want to go to that. I can equip this sign. You can, but it will kind of mean stealing it. I can't remember if that angers the entire... <laughs> Listen, I'm having a feeling of deja vu here. I've never uh, clicked this sign before, so impossible. Uh, I could attack the sign. That seems... How will people know? How will people... How would they know? They'll never know. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, we, that's fine. All right. So now I'm um, using the numpad. Let's, like, navigate on foot to the next screen north. Oh. And what, just so you know, one of the reasons we use the numpad is because it gives you diagonal uh, movement. So you can use seven, nine, oh. three, and one to move oh. diagonally. That's going to come up a lot. All right. I can. This is a tip it's given me. Yeah. Do I like this tip? You like it, but now it needs to leave. It's a good tip. Oh. All right. Oh, so, can I kill these fish? Yeah, you can. I'm pretty sure. Well, actually. Let's let's not. You're still technically part in Jopa right now. You're in Jopa outskirts. Mm -hmm. Um, do you remember how to auto explore? Not L. I'm out of ideas. It's a zero on the numpad. Oh. You're gonna have to leave that. I'm working on it. You're good. We. All right, this is important. A shrine, Tadarishib. The shrine depicts a significant event from the life of the ancient Sultan Daryl. I'm gonna call him Daryl. Daryl. While traveling through Saloon District Kabad, Daryl stopped at a market in Alarva Bar, <laughs> in an obscure shop. He purchased a glazed hammer and named it. Ugh. Glazed. <laughs> Glaze the Ducus Daryl Shidaboon. Wow, really? Really, Daryl? <laughs> Alright. Then he went to a nearby tavern and lost that same hammer to a local pickpocket. Cursed the tavern and left Al Arbapa. Nice. Well? So, what have we learned? Um, overall, or just about that one particular event? Uh, overall. I do not like the nonsense this game spits out for <laughs> names. It is a little gen, a gen gobbled a bit. Um, uh, 
Otherwise, shrines. I've learned sure. about shrines. So that shrine is particularly useful for a, a couple of mechanical reasons. Um, you'll notice you've discovered the location of the saloons of Kabad. Well, I mean, I've read about it. I know mechanically I have, but... And you've noted the uh, location in your journal, and now you've received a quest to visit that location and recover the thing, the hammer in question. Glazadukas! Glazadukas Daryl Shidboon. And all of that is like, you know, out of context is like, who cares? Um, we're, we're learning about um, that Sultan. The Sultan did a bunch of amazing things, whatever. Um, we don't necessarily have to care about that. But the important thing here is that they had a really cool hammer. That's the, that's the takeaway. And they lost the really cool hammer. And we know vaguely where they lost the really cool hammer. And so if we want to go and claim the really cool hammer, we could go to that location and try and, and find it. Hot damn. Hot damn. So genuinely good stuff. But we're not ready for that right now. We're only level two. If you want, you can uh, read some of those those graves. They're, they're, they're kind of pretty, they're kind of fun. They've got some interesting stuff going on. Oh, I don't think I like this game. Um, <laughs> and by this game, I mean reading of tombstones, not caves of cud. Here lies Kashrashwin. Kashrash. Kashrashwin. Cooked for sustenance by dogs. So the dogs cooked him? Yep. Eaten by dogs. I can't equip it. <laughs> can't equip it. Shucks. Here lies the body of Siroku. Dabbed to death by an Arconaut. He did get stabbed by what, an Arconaut. What is Arconaut? An Arconaut are uh, basically ruined dwellers. They tend to mill around in the uh, outskirts and collect trash and, uh, you know, goodies. And, and do stabs. Apparently. And do stabs, yeah. He arrests the body of Timia, drowned in the lake by a glover. I actually don't know what a glover Donald, is. Donald or Danny? Danny. <laughs> uh, Donnie. Oh. Donald. The lesser known, the lesser known glover. Glover. Yeah. Glover. Cutified a Donald. Ah, uh, he arrests the body of Hera Shiyuing. Crushed to death by a falling man masterwork scoped <laughs> chain pistol. Falling masterwork scoped chain pistol. That's interesting. You missed. You didn't say the symbol part. Yeah, I think that's actually um, that the symbol generally mean is the signature of the uh, of a, of the person who created it. But also, I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's an interesting one. We can move on from this. This is like, there's nothing we can gain from this really, but it's just kind of fun that there's like generated deaths. I'll do, I'll do the hidden one. Do the hidden one. Oh, I stepped on it. In loving memory of Nuke Imut, poisoned by a dream crungle. Glad I didn't miss that one. I have actually not uh, interacted too much with dream crungles. They are new content in CUD. Oh, yeah. Well, we should go find a dream crungle. If this series lasts um, upwards to 50 episodes, then we may just. No, I want to fast track to crungle land. I mean, we could. To the crungle in snow. Oh. Oops. Uh, oh, you have your jackhammer happened? equipped, so you automatically just destroy blocks, which is fun. Um, all right. Whoopsie. So let's um, we're gonna hit minus key uh, on your numpad. That that was that fun oh. tip that uh, you were given. Now that's interesting. Your named location is in the center of the rust wells. 
Um, I'm sorry, what? So to your east, you'll see three red little p pockets, pits. Um, those are the rust wells. We've been tasked by Argive to check out the rust wells because it has copper wire that he can use. Um, to the north is that little red plateau. Uh, that's red rock. Um, we've been tasked by uh, basically, our, not Argive, um, Irudad, but uh, Jopa to, to go and find what is eating the water vine and go to Red Rock to find that. So those are our two major quests right now. And then we have a sort of a side quest, two side quests. We could go to the Six Day Stilt, which is in the top left corner. It's the one little castle looking tile in the stilt, the desert land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or we could go to the named location and try and find the cool hammer. Um, rec I usually recommend that to, for like the, the first quest, we go to Rust Wells because it's a little bit gentler than Red Rock. Red Rock can be kind of vicious. Okay. So we can actually travel on this interface. You can click on it, but you're probably always going to want to manually walk. And there's a mechanical reason for that. Um, so a couple things happen when we travel on this overworld. This is taking a, like condensing a lot of real world time um, into like one button press. So like days are passing basically as we do this. Um, we're drinking water. And um, depending on where you are, you can actually you'll end up drinking more water. You can even see in your log on the right side there, you've taken a sip from your of fresh water from your water skin. I can see that. You're right. I um, agree. And uh, another thing that also happens is every time you move on this overworld interface, you, there's a chance that you can get lost. And uh, once that happens, it's uh, it, it can it can actually potentially kill your character if you roll badly enough. It's kind of like uh, you know like in our D and D campaign, like if if you just like get a really bad encounter, um, it can it can be you know kind of game ending. But um, it's rare for it to be that bad. So we want to go one more east to that top rust well probably the closest one and then you want to hit plus on your numpad to enter that tile you're hungry I'm hungry I can't fire to cook press a choose make camp and do i okay. press space first or do i press a now uh you press space first that's actually a new tip i don't remember that one but yeah you want to make a camp I can't. Right. There is a, there are a couple of hostiles nearby. So uh, hit E for just a moment. I want to see if you have a ranged weapon. You do not have a ranged weapon. I had um, a grenade, but you made me give it away. It was a, uh, it was a uh, defoliatizing grenade. I can't remember the, the it was, it's an anti-plant grenade. Yes, yeah, so it is. It is a plant, plant killer. Plant killer. Right but now you're fun show of force you know you're you're officially in combat as of this second so um and, and not against plants so unfortunately it would not have served you very well so um we're up against baboons um so you are a melee user you're probably going to want to step forward towards them but I want, I'm, I'm uh, going to ask you, you only take the one step because uh, you might notice something in, like immediately when you do. No, nope, maybe not. They take a second to realize that you're there. You can do like one more step. Yeah. Okay. So there it is. Um, so you'll notice that that baboon closest to you moved away from you. Mm -hmm. And he also threw something at you. Um, he threw a rock at you. You can look at the rock, but, um, you want to hit L. Oh, you've moved on it. You can look at it just with the L key. Now I want to take it. You can take it, but you can't take it while you're in combat. 
Um, but the, uh, I guess the important takeaway here is that they're ranged users. And they're, okay. they're clever ranged users. They'll actually move away from you and ensure that they keep their distance. What's this little blue guy? He's actually friendly. Um, he is, I believe, just a uh, hermit. All and right. he won't uh, he won't actually hurt you. He's one of uh, the few factions you're on good terms with. So, um, this isn't really going to accomplish much. Yeah. And in fact, he's occasionally going to get lucky and actually do damage to you. He did. He did do a damage. So, um, what we'd like to do is actually back up. Do you see the little crevice of ruins to your right? Yes. Let's move into there. I think this hermit's just going to deal with them. They might do some damage, but I don't actually hold out too much hope for the hermit. You can actually get in there by uh, diagonally moving through those runes. There you go. And now... Um, you can you can stay stay in that little corner actually just for a moment. I'll show you something cool here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait, and we're gonna wait by pressing the five key on the numpad. I don't I don't see anything in the log. Are you pressing the five in the numpad? I am doing that. I would I. I thought that the log would update. No, I mean, like, it is working. I saw something change. Um, you're gonna hit it a few times. Not too quickly, but, like, you know, with a, maybe, a, a like, a half a second interval between. Just to make sure that we're seeing if things change, like, while we're waiting. And what we're hoping for here is, um, since you've moved out of line of sight from the baboons, they're forced to move up to you if they want to continue fighting you. And so you're basically waiting until they step into that little corner uh, northwest of you. And then you can actually hit them. So yeah, keep... keep what, uh, if, what if they never come? Well, um, right now they're probably in combat with that hermit, although I think I saw something die. They might actually be dead. We can check on I see them. a goat. Oh, we see a goat. I don't see a goat. The goat's gone now. It's gone. Goats are friendly. Ish. We could also ignore this completely and, you know, just take the stairs down. We do want to go down into the rust the wells. The goat's back. <laughs> the goat is back. All right, I yeah. want to fight the monkeys. All right, well, let's go check to see how they're doing. They might actually be dead. I see one's blood splatter. I don't see anything else. So those monkeys are gone. Don't even see the hermit. That's odd. I keep looking at myself. You, When you hit the L key, you start looking at yourself, and then you want to use the numpad to move around. And that's how you look at things. You can get that since you're adjacent to it, but generally speaking, you can't do that. You can only... But let's have a let's have a look at that blood splatter. Let's see what that is. Mound of the wet hair. Corpse. Rotting flesh puts some elevation to the ground. Yeah, that's that is a baboon corpse. So we can be pretty certain that the hermit killed both. Can I get anything from a corpse? Uh if there was anything to take, it would have listed them as well, so no. You can um, butcher corpses in the future, although I don't think baboon meat uh, is particularly... Like, I don't think it gives you any usable meat. Um, so, from a baboon corpse, nothing. Him. You can take it, but then it'll take up room in your inventory. Should I pick up all these rocks? I wouldn't bother, no. They're, like, immediately better ranged weapons. So here's the interesting thing about the rust wells is we can actually kind of see what's down in the rust wells. You might notice that we can see a, it's like sort of a two head. Game Boys and a chest. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do I get down there? Well, you could do two things. You could take the stairs um, that we saw earlier, 
Or you can actually just move right into the pit. That is an option. Oh, There's the other baboon. baboon. There's the other baboon. So I guess the hermit died. These are the stairs. These are the stairs. So you want to hit the... Yeah, you got it. Okay. So um, that's kudzu. Kudzu sucks. I hate kudzu. I think everyone hates kudzu. Um, you can kill it. You move up and then attack diagonally. You can you can attack it. How do I specific? Do I just press at it? Yeah, just press press at it. There you go. You killed it. And you can do that to the next one. Now here's the problem with kudzu. A couple problems with kudzu is it doesn't do very much damage and it's very easy to kill but there's a lot of it especially in the rust wells that's kind of why it's called the rust wells in fact uh, because um the problem with kudzu is it's a very sappy uh plant and it will um if it gets enough lucky hits on you which if you move uh, adjacent to it enough it will start to damage your equipment by rusting it Oh. And so, like, done enough times, any of your, like, metal equipment will just begin to disintegrate. Which really sucks. We got a bat. Pretty sure the bat is friendly to you. So you no need. And just so you know, uh, if you accidentally press a direction into something that's friendly, you'll just swap places with it. You, it won't you won't auto attack confirmed uh, confirmed um if you recall in the first episode when i had you attack the zealot i had you hold control so control is basically you're like um manually attacking in a direction you will not move you could even do it like to a wall okay so there's our next staircase we don't necessarily want to go to it just oh. yet, though. Okay. Um, we're trying to find copper wire. That's why we're here. If you want, um, why don't we just hit the auto explorer? There's, it shouldn't be anything too dangerous here that would, like, kill you. But there is the occasional kudzu that you'll probably have to take care of. And we are gaining experience from the kudzu. It's actually kind of very, um... Oh... Oops. All right, something bad has happened. Um, you stepped on it, and you, it wasn't your fault. It, it was, it's actually invisible until you see it. It's a very well camouflaged plant. But uh, that white thing to your left is a young ivory. It impaled okay. you. I, yeah. I'm bleeding. You're bleeding. So hit to five a couple of times. Okay, so I think you're you're no longer bleeding. I think unless um, something is not working with the awake key. Oh, it looks like it's working. Um, hit tilde on your keyboard. Do you know which one that is? Sorry, hit what now? What? Tilde. Um, it's the key above tab. Okay, that might not actually be a default. Oh no, it is. Okay. So that's a very important key. You're going to want to use that a lot in the future, but basically when you're out of combat, when you're out of like hostilities range um, and you're damaged, that key basically tells your character to wait until they're fully healed. You you regenerate health like out of combat, like given enough time. Mm. So waiting until fully healed is a very good way of like preparing for next combat or not next conflict. There you go. Dreadroot refuses to speak to you. So that's a Dreadroot tuber. Okay. Uh, it's kind of like a, a, a very scary potato. But not a very conversational no. tuber. All right, we're making progress. And in fact, we found some copper wire. You definitely want to pick that up. 
I don't know uh -oh. why, it's, why it's saying bloody salt. You'll probably want to step on it in order to make sure you don't collect something you don't want. Um, sorry, just hit G. It's a, it's a lot easier. Um, there you go. So we need right. we need 200 feet of copper wire. So that is like part one of four. I did see some outside. Yeah, I, I also saw that. I think it that the, you can actually tell how long it is based on how bright the, the wire is. I'm pretty sure the one up top was like uh, 20 feet. So that's a plant up there that will actually attack you if you uh, if you're close enough to it and it can Potentially do some that nasty green, damage. That green inside red. Yeah. Yeah, and it hit, it crit hit you, but you're you're good. You've got a very decent weapon for this early in the game. I'm bat. I'm the Batman. Of course I do. You're Batman. You're one. Those are dogs. They should be friendly to you. Dogs are one of the few factions you're actually like friendly with. Hello. Chat with feral dogs. Soft growling. <laughs> okay. I mean, so... Uh, pee. You can pet it. You pet the it. feral dog. The dog barks. Adorable. I have actually don't think I've ever tried to pet the feral dog, so that's, that's really fun. That's, well. a, that's a seed spitter to your northeast. Seed spitter is a ranged based plant. He's fighting the dog. The yeah, dog the dog, him. dog killed him. That's why you pet the dogs. There you go. And you leveled up. Uh, na, na, na. Do I need to do anything with these attribute y points? Yeah, we probably do want to do something. Um, Do me a favor, hit E and let's have a look at what your jackhammer is. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. It's serving you well. Um, yeah, go ahead and like actually look at it because I, I, we can tell what kind of weapon it is. It's a cudgel. I really like cudgel builds. They're one of my favorite builds. So I might recommend since we're doing so well with a, a pneumatic jackhammer to like build on this and take some cudgel skills. Okay. Um, so we're gonna we can navigate to there from there from here, but um, hit X for a moment And then hit seven on your numpad Cool um, I think this still works if you want to hit minus on your numpad. I think it'll collapse all the menus it recommends four for collapse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do... No, try that. Yeah, try that. Oh, collapse might just collapse that one menu. Yeah, minus key still works apparently. So there's cudgel uh, below cooking and gathering. We can take it. And just by taking this tree, we will become more proficient with cudgel. Did you hit? The plus. Yes, I did. All right, that's that's all right. Um, if you want to just open uh, up one, you can do like. Expand. Yeah, there you go. I I can read sort of. <laughs> Cut your proficiency zero strength, bludgeon seventeen strength. Okay. So yeah, you'll see. Like these are all skills, and uh, like they make us better with the cudgel and they are gated behind not just your strength but also like having previous skills we want to take the tree to start with so just like you know the thing at the top that says cudgel hit space and uh, and we can buy it but my spur your spur yeah, right. we can have a look at what that gives us by looking at cudgel proficiency Get plus I two get to plus hit. two to hit with cudgels. It's very much cudgels. like a like a D and D kind of proficiency as we get, you know, plus to hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now let's have a look at bludgeon, because that that might be fun. 
Whenever you hit with a cudgel, there's a 50% chance to daze your opponent. Minus 4 int, minus 4 agi, minus 10 move speed. For 3 to 4 rounds, if you daze a dazed opponent, they're stunned for one round and said, cannot take actions and 0 dv. Yeah, stunning, stunning creatures is really fun. And in fact, um, you can you can definitely set up some really cool builds with cudgels that let you perma stun, like everything. <laughs> um, so I I love it for that. But yeah, we definitely we definitely want bludgeon. Um, we don't have to necessarily buy it now though. It's kind of up to you. Um, if you don't want to take that, I have other recommendations. Uh. Uh. I mean, this is fine for now, I think. It certainly immediately helps us because you're in a dungeon and you're going to be fighting stuff. So it'll help you to fight stuff. I want to spend most of my skill points for this bludgeon. Yeah. Pretty much all. All right. What else is there? Well, um, there's some range-based skills. So, like, when we get a ranged weapon, which pretty much any character should, probably. Um, we can take skills that help us, you know, land our shots. Um, tactics is really good for combat. Um, Self-discipline is really good for survival. It offers quite a lot for, uh, like improving on food based stuff and like food is a very major thing in cud um when you get into cooking and gathering uh it's sort of like the alchemy of cud uh every single like ingredient in cud will have some kind of fairly bizarre or mechanical mystical power like letting you um gain spikes whenever you drink water or um gaining the power to teleport with your mind um, so cooking and gathering is actually very, very powerful. So co uh, combined with something like, um, you know, self-discipline that lets you uh, take longer to get hungry, uh, cooking and gathering can be, like, very, very powerful. It's also very advanced, though. Like, um, I, I still haven't really fully unlocked the potential of cooking and gathering uh, after 500 hours of this game. All right. Um, uh -huh. there's also things to improve, like, your water rituals, if you recall, like, you can, you know, make a pact with someone, and it'll give you more reputation. Something I generally take with every, uh, character or playthrough. Because reputation is, like, one of the most important forms of currency in this game. So we can do an auto-explore. Uh, I don't think, like, unless we... I'll let you know if you see something really scary, but it, a one way you can always tell if something is scary is by looking at it. It'll actually tell you how dangerous it is. I was grabbed by a jilted lover. You you absolutely thwarted that jilted lover. Heck yeah. So I'm pretty sure there's only one 50-foot copper wire on each floor, so we can actually head down if you want. Oh, mm. there's another ivory. <laughs> I don't know where the ivory went. I guess it's on that blood splatter. The ivories uh, suck. They're kind of, uh, plants are kind of like the traps of cud. There's also like actual mines and stuff like that, but um, for a lot of dungeons, the plants are like what you expect will hurt you just by walking on them. Okay. I keep accidentally trying to fight the walls. Yeah, since you have your pneumatic jackhammer, that's not something that generally happens. So you can, you can actually punch through walls really effectively. You could actually break through walls. You could like, you know, totally ignore the, oh, the dungeon. Oh, killed the dog. Did you? No, it did. Oh no. Poor guy. Oh, 
I did good damage against that wall. <laughs> All right. If you Making want your uh, stairs. just so you know, if you want your character to automatically walk to the stairs, you can hit the plus sign on your numpad. And that's like the um Oh, you walked into the into the little pit. Um well, you can't now cuz you're on the next floor. Okay. Oh. What? Okay, that was maybe a slightly premature. Yeah. I died. Yeah. Oh no. So um that was a very I honestly have no idea what just happened. So you walked into the pit like completely? You took two steps down two ledges into the bottom of the rust wells and uh You told me to press plus that I did and I died. <laughs> um I trusted you. You were the chosen one. We can do a oh. reload. We're not we're not gonna be remaking a new character. You know, Batman. Great. We're back to level two, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, all right. Well, uh, why don't we to, why don't we why don't we leave it there for the yeah, episode? That's, that's that's fine. I need to mourn Batman's <laughs> first soul. I could try and figure out how to rename your character if you want to name them Batman too. No, I'll know. You'll know. Well, what what happens when we get to Batman 16? I'll still know? You'll still know. Okay. I'm going to believe you. All right. Well, um, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, my trust is gone. Damn. I will take every piece of advice you give me with with pure hesitancy and we'll make this series very awkward from here on out. Fantastic. I love that. Love that for both of us. Um, if you are enjoying this series, uh, Cud Buds with Galen. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fine. I commit to that. That's fine. Solid. Then definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing for more of this. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.